coffee shop has returned to the Robert Kennedy Library after two, a two-year hiatus. The culinary space in San Luis Obispo is growing thanks to one Cal Poly student with a passion for cooking. And the new Chick-fil-A on Cal Poly's campus is sparking positive and negative reactions from students. Broadcasting from Swanson Studios, you're watching Mustang News. Hello and thank you for watching Mustang News TV. I'm Maddie Harrell. And I'm Caitlin Shields. Let's get into today's top stories. Julian's Cafe has returned to the library. Reporter Jack Clark has more on the coffee shop's reopening. Julian's Cafe Bistro has returned to the library after almost two years. The coffee shop closed its doors in March of 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Students were excited to see that there is now a place to get food and beverages while they study, work, or socialize in the library. It's really convenient just not having to wait an hour and a half to get a drink from Starbucks or whatever. Um, I'm constantly over at Dexter, so I'm here. It's nice to be able to you know, get something and not have to put an order in well in advance. Freshman biology major Megan Hasbrook said that having a place like Julian's is a big help when she has to spend a lot of time in the library. Um, it's been really helpful so far. I've been studying a lot more on the second floor and I've been doing a lot more study groups here. I think I've been here like five hours already today, so yeah. She also added that once Julian's had reopened, she began to spend more time studying in the library. I went to the UU more often because they had the Starbucks option there, but now that this is here, I go here more. Julian's will be open in the library from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Friday. For Mustang News, I'm Jack Clark. Julian's can be found on the second floor of the Robert E. Kennedy Library. If you have an interest in the culinary arts, San Luis Obispo might be the place for you. Here's Alexa Kushner reporting on how the culinary community is expanding in slow, thanks to one student with a passion for cooking. There was recently an open potluck inviting all Cal Poly students interested in culinary arts. This event was hosted by statistics senior Rachel Castellino, who says she planned the evening with hopes of bringing people in the local culinary space together. I never had a community, honestly, like it was only me. My sister got more into food and cooking, so like I had her, um, but it's mainly always been me and that's why I kind of threw this dinner party because like I wanted to meet other people who have interests in like culinary and baking. The culinary arts is what inspires her to host events like the potluck and it doesn't stop there. Just last year, Castellino put on multiple pop-up restaurant events to share her food and showcase her culinary skills. The pop-ups were really a great way, oops, the pop-ups were a great way to show me that, um, like, I don't have any credentials in food, like, I am self-taught and everything, yet you can make a name for yourself by, if you really just, like, know how to advertise, how to market, how to make a name for yourself. Castellino's roommate, economic senior Anyana Shrikanth, says she's enjoyed watching Castellino's growth as a businesswoman and chef over this past year. The transition during COVID from going from just cooking things for me or our roommates to like doing pop-ups and all these bigger things that involve so many people and the amount of reach that she got, it's almost like she's a micro-influencer now, like everybody knows who she is. Although Castellino is graduating soon, she still plans to equally make time for both her professional career and her love for making food. So many avenues in food besides the standard like brick and mortar restaurant that I always thought existed or like the standard culinary school and growing up it was Food Network and I realized like I don't have to choose between career and passion. I can pursue what I want in statistics and data science or corporate or tech and also do food. In the future, Castellino hopes to expand the culinary space in SLO and meet more people who love to cook as much as she does. For Mustang News, I'm Alexa Kushner. If you would like to see any of Castellino's culinary creations, you can check out her food on Instagram at rachels underscore eats. A new campus dining option is now on Cal Poly's campus. Reporter Ava Kirshner tells us why some students aren't happy about its opening. 
Hello, I'm Ava Kirshner with Mustang News in Poly Canyon Village, where Cal Poly surprised open a new location of Chick-fil-A. After an almost two-year hiatus due to construction of the dining complex, The Avenue, Chick-fil-A is back on the university's campus. Here's what students had to say about it. When I heard it was open, I was like, how is that possible? The app is like under construction, and then I heard it's up at PCV, so I was super excited, and I'm stoked that it's back on campus. Yeah, I was pretty excited. There's not a lot of dining options up here, so it was nice. The new Chick-fil-A is a pop-up shop located in Poly Canyon Village in the former What's Cookin' location. Cal Poly Soft opened this location without an official announcement, causing some students to wonder why they never heard anything from the university. I thought it was kind of weird, but I, I think there might be like some reasoning behind why they don't want to do that. Like some people are upset with, you know, like the company's viewpoints, like LGBTQ. While Campus Dining said that they chose to do a soft open to control customer volumes, Mustang News reached out to the Pride Center on campus for comment. They could not provide a video comment due to limited staff, but said in an email that there has been much outrage on the Pride floors, especially those living near the Chick-fil-A in PCV. The Chick-fil-A location will be open at Poly Canyon Village for the duration of the academic year. For Mustang News, I'm Ava Kirshner. The new Chick-fil-A location is currently pickup only with no indoor seating available. Coming up after the break, we'll take a look at this week's weather forecast. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help, and slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Now we're going to our weather. Jimmy. Anchor Sophie Lincoln for a look at this week's forecast. Of Hi there, I'm Sophie Lincoln with a look at your weather forecast for this week. For today, we can expect mostly sunny skies with a high of 65 degrees and a low of 36 in the evening. The chance of rain today is only 3%, while humidity is looking pretty high at 50%. Winds are going to be coming in from the north at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And now taking a look at our Central Coast beaches, the temperature is looking pretty consistent at our North County beaches with a high of 63 in Cayucos and 62 in Morro Bay and Avila Beach. And it's looking a bit warmer down the coast with a high of 65 in Pismo Beach and a high of 64 in Oceano. The low temperatures are looking pretty consistent up and down the coast today, ranging from 38 to 41 degrees. And now moving on to our five-day forecast, Wednesday will be sunny with a high of 64, Thursday will be mostly sunny, also with a high of 64, and it'll start to warm up on Friday with a high of 70 and then staying in the 70s over the weekend. The low temperatures this week are a bit lower than we're used to here in San Luis Obispo, with tomorrow's low of 36 and the rest of the week's lows ranging from 39 to 42 degrees. That's all for your weather forecast. Now we go to Ethan Tejas for sports. Thank you, Sophie. I'm Ethan Teas here for your sports update and the latest on Cal Poly's lineup. The Cal Poly wrestling team won over Northern Illinois in a 28-6 match and Little Rock with a 40-0 match Saturday, January 30th. This comes right after highlight players Adam Kemp, Bernie Truax, Trent Tracy, and Samuel Aguilar rallied four straight wins in a row, securing a victory in the Mustangs' name. In other sports news, women's basketball fell short in their game with UC Irvine in a 64-52 match Friday, January 29th at Mott Athletic Center. However, offensive catalyst Hannah Scanlon scored a game high of 22 points, including 20 in the second half, securing a close call game after a big first quarter deficit. The Mustangs will have two more upcoming opportunities on February 3rd with their first match against Cal State Fullerton. Thanks, Ethan, for the sports update. A new apartment complex is coming to San Luis Obispo this fall. Stay tuned for details. Cause improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's Smokey! It looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. Next and finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch! 
Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. I came from five generations of teachers. Losing my job was the bottom falling out of my world. A new student apartment complex is coming to Foothill Boulevard. Reporter Sophie Lincoln has more on the new site's amenities and housing options. In a few months, this construction site will be a new apartment complex for Cal Poly students and community members. Let's take a look at what the Summit Slow apartment complex will have to offer. In September, what is now a construction site on the corner of Foothill Boulevard and North Choro Street will be a multi-story apartment complex with a rooftop lounge and ground floor retail. We do target towards students just because um, our leasing structure is just targeted towards them as well as just the amenity spaces. We're going to have like um, study spaces as well as, you know, the fitness center, um, things that are just, you know, more geared towards students. But of course, again, anyone can live here. The Summit Slow held its grand opening at its temporary leasing office off of Foothill last Thursday, where students and community members were able to learn about the complex's amenities, floor plans, and pricing. Finding housing is so stressful, so actually they were tabling at Dexter Lawn and they reached out, they're like, yeah, we got, it's a brand new place. I'm like, okay, I like to live in a nice place. The complex is currently accepting applications for the 2022 to 2023 school year. More information may be found online at summitslo.com. The complex will officially open for move-in in, in mid-September later this year. To schedule a tour or apply for housing, you can visit summitslow.com. A popular intramural sport has made a return to Cal Poly. Reporter Devin Spiegel went out to the ASI Ultimate Frisbee Tournament this weekend to check it out. A deeply missed intramural sport made a return with a round-robin tournament at Cal Poly Sunday evening. Tonight we have our Ultimate Frisbee Tournament of Winter Quarter in preparation for bringing back Ultimate Frisbee next quarter as a league. So it's kind of like football, but it's continuously going and when you catch the Frisbee you're not allowed to move. So you got to like work with your team to get it down to the end without dropping it essentially. And if it drops then it goes to the other team. The Cal Poly Intramural Ultimate Frisbee League was temporarily canceled due to COVID. So this weekend they held the tournament in preparation for the return of the official league during spring quarter. You have to give your green pass, obviously, and make sure everything's okay, but for the most part, it's all pretty much the same. We have to check our campus screeners at every game and every tournament that we have to make sure that we're not exposing anybody or having any unsafe environments. Other than that, we try to social distance when we are meeting participants and managers face-to-face -face as best we can, which is definitely a little bit different than we used to do, but probably a little bit safer. <laughs> we are trying our very best to get it as a league again next quarter. Especially since they are tearing out the upper sports complex, we will be able to use door again for Ultimate Frisbee in the future. That's our plan. <laughs> but it'll hopefully be multiple days a week, Ultimate Frisbee tournaments, one game per hour, just like this. For more information on the return of the Ultimate Frisbee League or other details about intramural sports, visit the ASI website at access.asi.calpoly.edu. For Mustang News, I'm Devin Spiegel. Head over to Doer Family Field tonight to watch the championship of the 2022 Ultimate Frisbee Tournament. That's the end of our broadcast. I'm Maddie Harrell. And I'm Caitlin Shields. Have a great rest of your day.